years of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. <laughs> You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia. He <laughs> asked me if I'm really happy here in America, and my answer is yes. I'm a got to my health to my friends and my little business. And mamma mia, believe me, my business is a plenty little. <laughs> if it was any little, you couldn't see it. <laughs> but still in America, they got a saying, you don't need to be rich to be happy. All you need is the money. <laughs> and only last week, I was reading a book, and inside it was a pictures of lots of big million American millionaires. Also tells how they was made their fortune. Johnny D. Rockefeller, he's made his money from oil. J.P. Morgan from the banks. And another fellow, Andrew Carnegie, the book says that he's got his money from a stealer. But I'm a no understanding. He looks too honest for that. <laughs> but I'm a like especially the picture of Mr. Johnny D. Rockefeller, Jr. Book tells how Mr. Rockefeller's son is a worker still hard all the day to make money. But still, I'm a think is a lucky thing is a papa was a born before him. <laughs> me, mama, me, I'm a not so lucky with money, but I'm a lucky with a friend. Besides my friends from a night to school, I'm a got to my good countryman, Pasquale, who's a brought to me to America. Sometimes a Pasquale, he's a act hard with me. But inside, he's a got a heart as big as his daughter, Rosa. <laughs> And mamma mia, that's the girl is a big. Uh, you look at her side the way that she's looking like a two people that stand in the front of her. <laughs> mamma mia, I was uh, sitting here in my store thinking uh, about uh, Pasquale's not to bother me too much lately with Rosa. How much I'm uh, owe him. When uh, suddenly the door is open up and in uh, comes a bigger wind. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. How's my ripe little pumpkin ahead, eh? <laughs> well, I was just to finish writing a letter to my mom. Well, Pasquale, you excuse me. How am I going to rush you to my night school account? Oh, wait a minute. What are you school, Luigi? Huh? So you're going to become a smarter ten minutes later. You know, lately I ain't been seeing you so much. Always you rushing off at the school, rushing off to the library, running here, running there. Someday you're going to wake up and find out you left the house an hour ago. But Pascal, I'm going to go now. Tonight in the school, we was going to study about... Study, the... study, study. What are you looking in a book so far? Ask me. I know everything. <laughs> the world is around. The D.O.G. is a dog. And two and two makes a five. <laughs> but Charlie, two and two is a four. Not by my cash register. <laughs> Luigi, get a wise to yourself. What do you think the schools are for, anyhow? That's just a place for kids who can't find jobs. Now, look, Luigi, you take my advice to forget about a school. It's the bigger things in a life. Like a what? <laughs> like a Rosa? No, no. <laughs> no, no, but, well, a Rosa is too fat for me. I'm never going to marry her. All right, Luigi. Since you don't want to talk a marriage or business with me, Maybe it's about time I talk a business of talk with you. Hey, hey, Pasquale, I'm, I'm gonna never see your face to look this way. Well, keep a look. 
Uh, I got all kinds of faces. For somebody who's appreciated my favors, I got a sweet to the kind of face who like an angel. But for somebody who don't appreciate what I'm a data for him, I got a mean face like a devil. Otherwise, I got a two faces. Do you understand that? <laughs> Yeah, Pasquale, you're the most two-faced man I know. <laughs> it's a funny thing, when I'm a sedative, it's a come out of different. <laughs> I never told you this before, Luigi, but my bringing you here to America was an investment. And every penny I spend on that investment, I write down in this little black book. Now I want you to pay me back. What the... Then you was never going to consider me a friend, huh, Pasquale? Friend? Luigi, people who don't marry my daughter, they're my worst enemy. <laughs> no, Pasquale, that's, that's, that's a hard to believe. You really keep a record in a little book of all of the money you was spent on it? Every penny. Here, let's look at some figures. Transportation, Italy to New York, $38. $38? $38? Sure, I didn't bring you over like a bum. You travel a steerage. <laughs> Yeah, but Pasquale, I'll pay you back for that trip. All right, all right. But remember when you stepped off of the boat, how hungry you was? Sure, traveling with all those animals, I'm going to get a terrible appetite. <laughs> okay, okay. Here it is in the book. Luigi, off the boat, the very hungry, hot dog, five cents. <laughs> Still hungry, not a hot dog, five cents. And you wrote all of that down, huh, Pasquale? Yep, two more hot dogs, ten cents, lemonade, three cents, Bag of popcorn, a dime, four hamburgers, a bag of spud nuts, and a coffee, 65 cents. A quart of ice cream with three flavors, 45 cents. And here's a one item for two dollars. Two dollars? Two dollars for what? A doctor. You got a stomach ache that day. <laughs> now, let me see. Next today, a haircut and a shave in the barber's college, 15 cents. A bottle of iodine and bandages, 20 cents. <laughs> Well, all right, all right, Pasquale. How much, how much you figure I'm owe you? Luigi, a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars? I'm one every penny. Pasquale, friendship don't mean nothing? Nothing at all, no. Pasquale, you know I'm not going to pay you. What are you going to do with me? I'm going to put you in a jail. Pasquale, you wouldn't have put me in a jail just for the money. What then? For love? <laughs> Luigi, business is a business. You don't want a rosa, I don't want you. That's as plain as the banana nose on your face. <laughs> All right, Pasquale, call the police. Oh, no. You're never going to make money for me while you're in a jail. So I'm throwing you out of your antique shop, cutting you loose. So you can find a job on the outside and make some money for me. You really want some sure to go, Pasquale? Well, you don't have to go right this minute. I know it's got to take a time at the pack, or clean up the place, or settle all your business, find a push cart to move out of your stuff, or find a place to sleep. All that it takes time. I'll give you 50 in a minute. <laughs> all right, all right. By tomorrow night, I want you out of here. Even if you've got to sleep in the park. Well... And Pasquale is a feel that the way about to me is no use for me to stay here no more. Well, I'm going out to my night of school and say goodbye to the only friends I'm going to left. Quiet, Flat. Please, please. All right. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Well, he's not usually absent. Mr. Horowitz? Yeah. Mr. Olson? Hey, yeah. Mr. Schultz? The flesh is here, but the spirit is playing hockey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, fellow boobers. Smile, everybody. <laughs> but I'm, a, I'm a hit of misposing. I'm... You're late, Mr. Basco. Well, I was, I was having a little trouble. Oh, that's was... all right. Just take your seat. Now, class, today we are taking up some of the more common errors made in grammar. And one of the commonest, perhaps, is the split infinitive. Mr. Horowitz, what is a split infinitive? I don't know. Mr. Basco? I'm a don't know. <laughs> Mr. Schultz? Don't look on me. I ain't crossing the picket line. <laughs> oh, good heavens, 
Doesn't anybody know the answer? Mr. Basco, what does the book say on Hair that? Hair cut and a shave and a barber's a college of 15 cents. <laughs> what? What book did you find that in? That was in a Pasquale's little black book. It tells every penny Pasquale's has spent on me since he's brought me to this country. Luigi, why did he do a thing like that? Now he's a figure out I'm over a thousand dollars, and if I'm a donor, marry is a fat daughter, or so I'm going to get out. <laughs> then Luigi, get out. An ounce of prevention is worth 250 pounds of cure. <laughs> Luigi, smile. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Basco. Mr. Pasquale's probably trying to throw a scare into you, as always. Yo, hoy, after all, Pasquale brought you here. Uh, and he is responsible for your general welfare. Sure. Probably by this time he's forgotten the whole thing. No, no, friends, not the way Pasquale was an actor tonight. Tonight he was a really hard man. He must have eaten one of his meatballs. <laughs> My Luigi, he wouldn't really chase you out into the park. You just tell him America is a free country and you can pick any wife you want. Yeah, but a shoot's a suppose and a Pasquale is an listen, I'm still a gotta slip in a park. So it's still a free country. You can pick any bench you want. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, I'd like to mention what a friendly companion a little package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum can be to you during the day. When you're busy working or shopping, it takes just a second to slip a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint into your mouth, enjoy some pleasant chewing, and get a refreshing little lift without even taking time out. The lively, delicious, real mint flavor leaves a clean, fresh taste in your mouth, and the good, smooth chewing helps keep you feeling alert and satisfied. So tomorrow morning... Tuck a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum into your purse or pocket. Be ready at any time to enjoy a refreshing, good-tasting treat. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, has it happened the worst thing that could have happened to me? I'm going to find out if Pasquale is not really my friend. I'm going to get out of the store so Olsen has told me I should go to the YMCA to place it for sleep. I'm going to just come back. And after seeing what's going on there, I don't like it. How am I going to sleep if they're going to wake me up every two hours to play handball? <laughs> Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm uh, sitting uh, here looking in a newspaper for a job when uh, suddenly the telephone is ringing. Here's uh, Luigi Basco. Hello. This is uh, Pasquale. Goodbye. <laughs> you still in the store? Yeah, Pasquale. I've been looking for a job, but I'm uh, not going to find the one. Well, you better find the one quick. But uh, Pasquale, I'm going to look all over the paper, but there was uh, nothing. Did you look under the H's? You could find the job there. Under the H's? Uh? What's uh, that? Husband. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm, I'm sorry, but... All right, in two hours, you're going to get a thrown out and the sheriff is coming with his posse. Goodbye. <laughs> Mamma mia, was I was at the newspaper. I'm about to find something quick. My trouble is I'm never sure to stay in an antique shop. I'm sure to gone into some other business. Mamma mia, what's this? Learn the trade. Make money while you learn a new trade like building a refrigeration or radio electronics and an accountant. Plan your career with Uncle Sam and join the United States Marines. Sure, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have to fight and I'm going to learn a trade. By the time I'm going to get out from the Marines, I'm going to pay back a Pasquale. I'm going to have a college degree. Then I'm going to go back to my night school class and I'm going to be the smartest one there. Luigi Basco, your troubles is over. You're going to be an United States Marine. Hmm. Sign 
on a building is a say on a list of men of centers. Says nothing about the jobs. It's a funny kind of building. It. Funny kind of building it for teaching. It. Looks like army barracks. Well, I'm going anyway. Making a move in the pictures are here. <laughs> All right, Bud, what are you looking at? Oh, please, I'm going to see you out in the paper and I'm going to come for a job. A job, eh? Well, that's one way of putting it. Dodger Bass, another recruit. All right. Hmm, let's see these papers. Luigi Basco, 21 North Halstead Street. Uh, Have a seat, Mr. Basco. Thank you. I see here, Mr. Basco, you've given us your reason for coming here to learn a trade. That's right. You see, Pasquale, he's my countryman who's on a spaghetti palace. Well, he's a throw me out of the store. I'm got to no place to go. I'm going to show you an advertisement in the paper, so I'm coming for a job. Please. You got a room for one or more marine? <laughs> Mr. Basco, I don't want to disillusion you, but let me tell you something about marine life. Now, in the first few weeks, a Marine must learn how to walk miles with heavy marching equipment, how to stand guard, how to drill for hours on end, how to use the bayonet. He learns first aid, how to improvise stretchers under battle conditions, and how to handle grenades, rifles, and machine guns under direct bombardment. You understand that? <laughs> huh? What's the matter? Huh? I say, I say, what's the matter? Well, there was so much noise going on. How am I going to study for my college degree? <laughs> Mr. Basco, would you want the Marines to throw away their guns just so you can study? No, but if they could just keep it quiet for two, three hours a day, I'm appreciative. Sure. <laughs> Please, uh, in a paper you say you're going to teach me some uh, trade. Well, we do, but as an antique dealer, you hardly qualify in metallurgy, engineering, photography, electronics, construction, and similar trades. Now, now what are you good at? I'm a good at the milk and the goats. <laughs> hmm. Perhaps I should give you a simple aptitude test to find out what you're best suited for. Okay. Now, these pictures here represent different types of battle equipment. Now, what would you say these are? Well, uh, is a look of familiar? Is uh... thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, brother! Now look here, right here below the tanks. You see, now here's a piece of naval equipment. Is that a U-boat? What? Is that a U-boat? No, that's not my boat. <laughs> We can't have a third war. <laughs> Mr. Basco, I'm afraid you don't give us much to go on. Now, there must be some field you can go into. Have you ever heard of jet pilots? No, I'm a got old-fashioned gas range. <laughs> old-fashioned gas. Yeah. May we, may we better leave the business of finding you a job for later. Believe me, there are hundreds of fascinating vocations. But I'm on a one of vacation. I'm a one of job. <laughs> Mr. Basco, pay attention. I said vocations. And there's no telling what might interest you. You might take a liking to something like, uh, well, aerial photography. How much money am I going to make at taking the pictures of aerials? <laughs> it's, uh... <laughs> oh, no, okay. oh, you see, it's, it's, huh? it's obvious. It's obvious you don't know the meaning of aerial photography. <laughs> well, you see what you do? You go up in a plane, they strap you onto the tip of a wing, and you take pictures of the ground at about 400 miles per hour. <laughs> what are the jobs you got? Mr. Basco, 
I think your willingness to learn is more important than anything else. Now, if you'll just sign this enlistment paper, we'll work out the details later. I'm, I'm a sign of the paper? Yeah, that's right. On the bottom black line right there. Black line. All right. Yeah. You're fine. Then now, when am I going to start? You start right now. Right there. Tension! <laughs> Put that smile off your face! Huh? I'm right! Put it up! Shut it down! Drop that donut! What do you mean, eating while you're on duty? What's that with you? Come on! 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 Come on!
us is of no use, so we call up the army. They say they take anybody. If they take anybody, they take a Luigi. <laughs> Uh, pardon me, is Private Basco here? Yeah, it's me, Private Basco, United States of Marine. Oh, Private Basco! <laughs> uh, I, I'm from the Marine Corps. Oh, please, don't <laughs> take him away. That's my Luigi. No, no, please. Pasquale Rosa, please. Wait, please. If I'm a gotta go, I'm a gotta go. All right, the captain, I'm a pack of the bags. Uh, Mr. Basco, the enlistment section just checked over your papers and they find a mistake has been made. Huh? You're not a full citizen. But it's too late. He's got his first papers. Yes, so we just uh, called the army and they told us that they accept the head. Uh, well, sir, first papers are enough for the army, but the Marines requires full citizenship. Uh, Mr. Basco, I- I've got bad news for you. Huh? You-, you can't be a Marine. What? Mamma mia, I'm a no Marine. I'm a just a Luigi Basco. <laughs> I- I'm sorry, sir. Good night. Oh, Pasquale, life is a good to us. You got your wish. I'm a no more marine. Now you and me, we're partners, and we're going to live happily after after. after. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, and you and me can get married. Oh. <laughs> well, if I'm a promised, I'm a promised. Right, the partner? Luigi, we're not the partners. Huh? Rosa, get away from here. But Papa, what about our marriage? It's all off. But the wife, Pasquale. My daughters are going to have nothing to do with a draft of Dodger. <laughs> So, Mamma Mia, I was almost in the Marines, but as it turned out that I didn't go. And right now, around here, is like they say in a war, all the quiet and the first quality of front. <laughs> He's say nothing, and I'm a say nothing. I'm a figure out, let him keep his business as long as he keeps his daughter Rosa. <laughs> but I'm a think, maybe Pasquale is really happy that I'm coming back. Just before he's come into my store, and he's brought to me some milk and some stale cookies. <laughs> and he didn't write it down in his little black book. I made sure I'm a paid him in a cash. You're loving a son, Luigi Vasco, the little immigrant. The makers of Wrigley's Spim and Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they'd like to remind you that a refreshing stick of Wrigley's Spim and Gum is an ideal taste treat to enjoy between your meals. It isn't rich or heavy, yet it does satisfy that little craving for something good in your mouth to chew on. Besides, as you know, chewing is good for the teeth and digestion. So carry a package of Wrigley's Spim and Gum with you wherever you go. Then, morning, noon, or night, you'll always be set for some real chewing enjoyment. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at the same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Friends, the Wrigley Company invite you to listen to their other program, The Gene Autry Show, every Saturday night over most of these same CBS stations. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.